Let's discuss the first of the wealth building formula strategies. Ryan, your fundamental research of publicly traded companies led to the wealth building formula. What is the wealth building formula and why is it so successful? My research of corporate balance sheets led to the discovery that companies that can grow their stockholders' equity at a fast rate are the most successful and profitable companies available in the universe of publicly traded companies. Historical price data shows that these type of companies produce the most returns for their shareholders over time. Stockholders' equity represents the true value of your stock, and I like to refer to the stockholders' equity as a stock's intrinsic value. If a company can grow its intrinsic value at a fast rate, then the true value of your stock is also growing at a fast rate. We discovered there is a strong correlation between the growth in intrinsic value and stock price appreciation. In the Wealth Building Formula book, we use the example of United Healthcare. United Health is a company that has grown its stockholders' equity or intrinsic value at a 31% compounded annual rate between 1990 and 2006. United Healthcare's stock price has also shown a strong annual price appreciation growth rate of 35% annually. A $10,000 investment in UNH's stockholders' equity in 1990 grew to more than $1 million by 2006. A $10,000 investment in United Health's stock grew to more than $1,800,000 over the same period. This is an example of the correlation between growth in stockholders' equity and share price appreciation. Similarly, we also discovered that companies that do not grow their stockholders' equity or show a decrease in their stockholders' equity are generally bad investments over time. For example, Sirius Satellite Radio's stockholders' equity has been declining at a 38% annual rate. Its stock price has also been declining. Over the past year, its stock price has declined 54%. We define a wealth building formula stock as a company that can grow its stockholders equity or intrinsic value at a 10% or greater annual rate. Let's take a look at some historical profit results for a sampling of 10 wealth building formula stocks. This will give you a feel for the powerful profit potential of this system. Investing $1,000 in 1990 in each of the 10 wealth building stocks listed here grew to an incredible $6 million by December 31, 2006. Results include dividends but not commissions. These stocks represent a broad cross section of different industries from biotechnology to coffee houses. This sample portfolio of 10 wealth building formula stocks handily outperformed all other types of investments over the same time period. This table compares the growth of a $10,000 investment for various types of investments from 1990 through 2006. Over the same time period, the wealth building stock portfolio had a total return of over 60,000% compared to a total return of 204% for U.S. government bonds, 176% for crude oil prices, 116% for home price appreciation, and 62% for gold bullion prices. This demonstrates the powerful profit potential of wealth building stocks. Page 23 of the Wealth Building Formula book shows how you can quickly and easily download the rate at which a company is growing its stockholders' equity. Companies that are growing their stockholders' equity at a 10% annual rate or higher would qualify as wealth building formula stocks and would have the best potential for price appreciation. We also provide an online calculator at chuckhughes.com that will calculate intrinsic value growth if you input a company's stockholders' equity values. Chuck, can you walk us through an example of how we can determine if a stock qualifies as a wealth building formula stock? Of course, Marie. A company's stockholders' equity information can easily be downloaded from the Internet. I like to use the Yahoo Finance website to obtain this information. Let me walk you through an example of determining if a stock qualifies as a wealth-building formula stock. 
the first step would be to log on to yahoo.com and click Yahoo Finance. Let's use Apple for this example. Once we log on to the Yahoo Finance website, we would type in the stock symbol in the Get Quotes window. The stock symbol for Apple is AAPL. Then click the Get Quotes link. A detailed quote window will be displayed for Apple. If you look in the lower left hand corner, you will notice a link for the balance sheet information, which I have circled. Click this link and it will display the stockholders equity information at the bottom of the balance sheet page. Now, after clicking the balance sheet link, the stockholder equity information is displayed for Apple. For the period ending September 25, 2004, Apple's stockholders equity was $5,076,000,000, which I have circled. Two years later, on September 30, 2006, Apple's stockholders equity was $9,984,000,000. Page 25 of the Wealth Building Formula book includes the five steps you would take to manually calculate the annual stockholders' equity growth. Now, you can also log on to ChuckHughes.com and the online calculator will calculate the annual stockholders' equity growth rate. Let's use the Apple figures just presented as an example. There are four inputs that need to be typed in for the online calculator to calculate the annual equity growth. So we would type in the starting stockholders equity, the ending equity, and the number of years. Then we would click calculate and the calculator will calculate the annual stockholders equity growth rate. Apple has an annual stockholders equity growth rate of 48% and therefore qualifies as a wealth building formula stock. The wealth building formula strategy rules require a company to grow its stockholders equity at a 10% or higher annual rate. So a Apple obviously qualifies as a wealth building formula stock. Retained earnings is the largest component of Apple's stockholders equity. Most of the increase in Apple's stockholders equity was the result of the growth in retained earnings, which grew at a 55% annual rate over the same two-year period. Retained earnings growth reflects a company's ability to grow its earnings and to retain those earnings. Stockholders' equity growth takes into account a company's ability to retain its earnings and a company's debt level as debt reduces stockholders' equity. So a company's stockholder equity growth is the best overall measurement of the ability of a company to grow its earnings and to retain those earnings. A company with a high level of stockholders equity growth provides ec economic value to its shareholders as the true worth or intrinsic value of a company grows.